Hey guys, so recently um, I just ordered a bunch of parts for my 2000 Argo 8x8, it's uh, Argo Conquest, and uh, mainly tires, they're really, really bald, the machine's 23 years old now, you know, and all the tires, which are the original 22 inch run amuck tires from 23 years ago, just finally had it dry rotted just bald so I ended up replacing them or I'm going to replace them uh, I ordered in all of the um, Argo swim tires so these are going to be 24 inch these are really going to be a tight fit I ordered nine of them because I wanted a spare tire I'm gonna build a uh, spare tire carrier for the back of that along with uh, adding to the roll cage but uh, I wanted a spare tire and a spare rim, so ordered nine of these. These these things are two hundred and thirty dollars a piece. Okay, I mean they have a deeper tread design than the original Runamucks that came on the Argo, but so these are twenty-four inch tires, which is the biggest tire that I can get on that model. But anyways, the other part that I bought, or the other parts. Argo is a, uh, are these older Argos prior to 2005. After 2005, they went to the steering that I'm going to show you that I'm going to do a conversion on. So that's what this video is about, is the individual steering levers. I'm going to remove those, and I'm going to install a, basically a handlebar. The newer Argos all come with these handlebars, and they twist, right? It twists to activate the brakes. I'll show you on the Argo Bigfoot because they're identical. Uh, this 2001 Argo Bigfoot that uh, I also got the chains in for. So this is how an Argo steers. You got uh, these two little master cylinders here that activate two brakes here. Now the transmission that sits in the center of the two brakes right there is what enables this machine to either brake one side or break the other side or both right so when you pull the steering lever right here right? pulling the steering lever back it activates the plunger for the master cylinder that stops this side or squeezes this brake stops this side from turning allowing that side to turn which gives it its ability to skid steer. For now, I just want to get rid of the individual steering levers because it does take both hands all times to drive this these vehicles. So let's get started. Um, it's pretty easy to pull this thing out and uh, get all that going, but I'm going to pre-assemble as much as I can. So to remove this, again, I'm just showing you this on the Argo Bigfoot because there's no engine in here and it's easy to show you from different angles what I'm going to be doing to the eight by eight. So essentially there are three bolts that hold this bracket in. This is that big thick bracket right here. Um, this one just holds the two levers, you know, as you've seen. Well, the new bracket, so the new bracket's gonna hold the, uh, the steering arm. So essentially these three bolts down here, one, two, three, those are gonna come out I'm gonna loosen up this bolt, loosen up this bolt, take these uh, brake lines off, and then the whole unit, steering lever and all, will come out. All right, so first order of business, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-assemble the handlebars and you know the uh, steering shaft um, into the bracket, you know, and get everything set up, pre-set up. So you you can order all these parts from Argo, and it was about 700 and. Oof, I don't know, 750 bucks, somewhere around in there, for all of these parts. Okay, that included the steering uh, and the brake cable and all that good stuff. Uh, but they discontinued a lot of this stuff because this steering mechanism right here, which is only compatible for this machine, the new Argo APS steering system and all that crap, wouldn't be compatible. It's not going to be a di direct bolt-on. This was because Argo um, first introduced the handlebar steering in their Argos in 2005 and they went to 2007 which now morphed into the Argos you see today the the newer models with the same type of handlebar 
you know, that twists when you steer. So you can effectively drive the machine with one hand instead of always having two hands on the lever to turn right or left or both down to brake. Because again, all these parts are discontinued and from what he was telling me, I pretty much gotten a lot of the last of their parts for this stuff that they're no longer making. So that's why I wanted to do the video. So I hope it helps somebody and maybe even uh, we may look to fabricate um, this setup for the Argo Bigfoot over there. So, yeah. But, all right. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pre-assemble this. Um, all right, let's get started. All right, so I've got the first uh, little leg on, and uh, which required me to put in one of those roll pins, first hole. Then there's a snap ring that holds this first one on, and you can see how it how it is able to move. Right. So it's going to be facing the front, like so. And what you had to be mindful of when you, when you do that, put that snap ring in there, with this leg facing forward the way it is, there's that uh, keyway there. And that keyway has to match up with how your handlebars bars are going to sit, which is going to be this way towards the back, right? So, all right, let's get the other part on. All right, got both of those in, got that roll pin in. Pretty simple. All right. Steer right, steer left, push into uh, get the concept. All right, next is going to be uh, the bushings on the rod, and then uh, fit it up into the uh, the neck here on the bracket. All right, there we go. Got the bushings on, rod in, mounted on the bracket. It's able to turn. Let's get the uh, top cap on. First, I have to uh, fix this pin. All right, so we have the uh, top part of the handlebar mount, the rod or the steering uh, rod through there. Everything's working the way it should. All right, let's get the handlebar on and the top cap on. All right, so there we have the basic assembly. The handlebars attached. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. He said. Be able to drive my Argo with one hand through my property, and if I want to freaking sip a beer, who gives a shit, right? But I can do it because I won't be using two hands driving this snap anymore. So my next step is well, I've got to disconnect my uh, my winch um, my winch switch, which I have zip tied to the throttle cable. So I'm gonna also have to disconnect and pull this off so that I can take all this off in one unit. And again, it's those three bolts. One, two, three. And uh, this whole thing should pull out. So I went ahead and uh, disconnected the brake lines um, down here at the um, calipers so that uh, I can pull the whole thing out at once. Um, I've already got the bolts loose. The, those last two right there are just barely in, just holding the thing in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. I went ahead and also pulled the um, the throttle off of the lever. Then I'll remove that as well because I'm going to keep those and put them on the, the new the new one. So All right, so this thing's ready to pull out. And now we have it out. That's the entire <laughs> breaking system lever system from Argo. So now I'm going to uh, strip all that stuff off there, and put it on the uh, new bracket, and then mount that. And there we have the finished product. So I've got those mounted back on there again. As you can see here, as you twist, so, and that's how that works. Uh, next I'll put on the brake system so that's the hand brake that's uh, gonna go on here it's a hand brake for the handlebar have a hose or a hose a wire <laughs> coming down and connecting right about here and then going over the other side right in between here and looping around 
and then coming back over here. So when you squeeze your handbrake, what happens is the handbrake will squeeze both of these at the same time and uh, stop the machine, like basically pulling both levers back at one time. Same concept. So you can actually brake and steer at the same time as well. So, kind of cool. So that's actually kind of a cool feature. You can see that uh, that last nut is just drilled and then these are slotted to where you can adjust these up and down. So, I'll tighten that in. Pretty cool. I'm excited. Oh yeah. Alright, let's finish it up. Well, looks like I'm going to be uh, making a trip to the auto parts store because this brake line, remember I have to cross them because when I turn um, to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left, if I turn it to the left, then this one has to activate. So, and that is just ever so fucking slightly too short. About an inch. So I'm going to go to the auto parts store. I'm going to take this one off. Go to the auto parts store and see if I can't get, get ones that are longer. I don't care if they're like three or four or five inches longer. Who gives a shit? I'll route them in a certain way. But um, That's it. Yeah, well, now I'm going to have to wait uh, for some brake lines. Hopefully they have some. All right, so I ordered a couple of brake lines. Unfortunately, uh, Napa only had enough fittings to do one, so I picked the other one up tomorrow. But you know, this one I, this one can be used the way I had to route it. You know, but I would rather have the extra slack and the extra line. So I am going to replace that. But this one will work. Um, so yeah, there's basically the complete complete setup right here freaking turned out cool as shit so now I just turn now there is something that does kind of bother me the way they clamped this thing right here so this when I turn touches that so hopefully hopefully that uh, little bit of turning will get me, you know, to clamp that brake hard enough to turn. If not, I'm going to have to do something different. So, but as it sits, way fucking cool. So essentially now it's set up the way the 2005 to 2007 Argos were with this body style. After 2007, um, they kept that steering. Uh, updated it with hydraulic instead of instead of this wire brake um, deal here, this cable brake. They went with hydraulic, but they also had to add two additional um, calipers. So they ended up putting one like right up here and one tucked up underneath or something. And there's just not enough room in there for this one. So uh, I'll, I'll be happy with this. Th this will work just fine. So, but yeah, there you go complete install of the uh, handlebars so what I am gonna have to do my firewall when I put the firewall back in there I am gonna have to cut that out I have some kydex that I can thermal mold plastic that I can heat up and uh, shape around that to cover that up and then rivet it to the to the firewall so it'll cover that up but yeah pretty freaking cool so next is the tires I'm gonna see if these tires fit so all right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hope you learned something. Um, fabricating something like this wouldn't be too hard either. All right, guys, again, thanks for watching.